You guys, I cannot believe this is actually happening. Hello everyone, this is Kalimara here. As you've probably seen from the title and thumbnail, it's, it's a real wild day today. Never in my wildest dreams would I, little old Kelly and her barely 5k subscriber count would annoy Yandere Dev enough to warrant a whole dang video response. I mean, sure, everything I said in my previous two videos of him have been mentioned and are basically the same points made by bigger channels to an extent, channels who have dived into them much more extensively than I did, but did any of those channels post any content about Yandere Dev recently that would make him slightly squirm in his big boy bridges? Nope. You know who did? This little gremlin right here. Three videos criticizing Yandere Simulator's game mechanics and he pops out a video on fixing flaws in game mechanics? <laughs> I don't know. This came onto my homepage and I thought about making a video about it, but I was like, nah, what would there be to talk about? I watched it, thought the trash bag edition was unnecessary, it's just another feature creep really, and then he brought up Hitman again and I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's surprising. But then, but then, he says something very, very specific that caught my attention because he's never really made it a point to mention this before in any of his other videos where he really references Hitman. And of course, I am talking specifically about the huge video drop he did last month in December when my first video on him came out and I literally made it a drinking game to see how many times he references other games. <laughs> it meant. <laughs> and now in this new video, he says... It's no secret that Yandere Simulator borrows many gameplay mechanics from Hitman. But I've always been determined to make sure that Yandere Sim feels like it has a unique identity that is as separate from Hitman as possible. So instead of trying to imitate Hitman perfectly, I've always tried to Yanderify any gameplay mechanic that I take from Hitman. For example, instead of throwing a coin to attract attention, Yandere Chan giggles to attract attention. <laughs> After all, a creepy, mysterious giggle coming from the shadows is exactly the sort of thing you'd expect from a Yandere girl. <laughs> and this was what I said. I mentioned before in my previous video how Yandere Dev tries too hard to make Yandere Simulator like Hitman, and Infochan is one of the best examples of this. Ayano is not a Hitman. She shouldn't be getting insider resources and information from an IT person that is exclusive to her. What other Yandere character has ever needed someone telling them what to do or how to act, or needing someone to give them resources or instructions to complete their goals or even need their targets pointed out to them? Yandere Simulator is supposed to be about a Yandere girl, not a spy girl. But because Yandere Dev borrows so heavily from other games instead of trying to think of original concepts, he fails to realize that he's losing the plot and it's just such a huge waste. And I felt shaded. This guy shaded me. Yes, me. The girl who isn't even a verified channel who still uses a free video editing software to make all her videos. In all seriousness though, I realize that I'm probably reaching a little bit because what are the odds that Yandev with his 2.7 million subscribers is going to see or care about my videos that doesn't even have 100k views. And I know I'm not the first person to make note that Yandere Simulator shouldn't be borrowing so many elements from Hitman either because it doesn't work for the setting of the game or from a narrative perspective. Much bigger channels like Kappa Kaiju and FPS Diesel have gone into this in much greater detail, but essentially, the point being made is that Yandere Simulator needs its own original concepts and mechanics instead of just being a bargain bin anime knockoff hitman. And if this video came out specifically because of my teeny tiny voice in the YouTube sphere, then it is definitive proof that Yandev monitors any and every criticism of his game and foams at the mouth at it. 
My friend Shortcake, the creator of Bochan from Love Letter, said this and I couldn't agree with her more. It checks out with his usual MO of obsessively monitoring Discord messages, Reddit posts, even YouTube comments, but I didn't actually think this was true. But this, this sort of changed my mind a little bit. Yandere Dev is definitely something of a control freak who gets overly concerned about his public image to the point he will make a thousand straw mans to worm his way out of a genuine criticism and avoid addressing the actual issue. And he also seems to lack any ability to reflect on himself and his own actions, but I will give it to him that he acknowledges the point I was making and tried to address my issue in the video. Well, some of it. I can see that he does listen to criticism and he does his best to make the appropriate changes that would address such criticism. However, whether or not he actually succeeds is another matter entirely. You see, he says he's trying to yonderify the hitman mechanics to make them more endemic to his game, except his idea of yonderifying mechanics is about as original as copying your friend's homework and changing it a little, you know? It's a very shallow tweet that, in the example he uses with the bang snaps, actually makes less sense for the game. Just logically, alright? Think logically for a second and imagine someone not only having firecrackers at school, but also setting them off indoors. You could get in trouble for setting them off outdoors in an open area that isn't as big of a fire hazard. And you just, you don't set off firecrackers of any kind indoors because those things stain. They ruin the flooring. For a prestigious school like Academy, you'd probably get expelled for misdemeanor at the very least. It would actually make more sense for Yandere Dev to keep it a coin or just tweak the radio distraction so that the students would pick up the radio and try to return it to its original place instead of just turning it off and leaving it in the middle of the hallway. There is a difference between taking inspiration and just copying something. When you reference a picture or a photo to draw something, or maybe you take abstract concepts like colors and apply it into a design, you're taking inspiration. When you trace, you're copying. This is tracing, essentially, metaphorically. Alright, so what would be an example of a more original idea using a throwable distraction like in Hitman? Taking into consideration the high school setting, maybe you could throw an eraser at someone and incite a fight between two students. That would definitely draw people to one area, students and teachers alike. Or just anything aside from firecrackers, maybe? But honestly, why was the coin feature even necessary? He's literally solved the problem already by having the radio be remote control. Yeah, he says it's limited because you have to be at that spot to place the radio and then turn it on, but from my understanding, Yandere Simulator doesn't even have any stealth situations that would require players choosing the throwable item over a radio. He's trying to create a balancing mechanic for an issue that doesn't even exist yet. If anything, he's only going to make the radio mechanic redundant like he did with the music case because the throwable item would be more convenient. And I know I'm pretty much working backwards talking about this video, but let's quickly talk about the trash bag mechanic, shall we? As much as I think it's unnecessary, it is interesting, I'll give him that. The addition of a cleaning day was clever, but I also think it doesn't even need to be there because he's creating more issues by adding features that might not even make it into the game's final version, if we ever get that far. On top of that, the reasons why he thinks people aren't disposing bodies is fundamentally incorrect. It's not necessarily because the mechanic is redundant, it literally just depends on the player's preferences. If you want to play the game the right way, then they would try and dispose of the body no matter what. If they just want to speedrun the game, they'll never dispose of the body no matter what because it takes too long. It just really depends on what the player wants to do, and considering Yandere Simulator is a sandbox game, they are encouraged to take advantage of that freedom, so I don't understand why he also wants to push them in such a specific direction. I think what he's pointing out here is a non-existent issue because there is no real consequence for not disposing the body. There's no incentive to do so either. The game itself doesn't reward or penalize you for not disposing the body because it's not required to attain the goal of getting away with murder. So often the best solution is the simplest one. 
make it a requirement. Have it so that the bloody clothes, murder weapon, and body need to be disposed of for Ayano to get away with murder. Simple as that. If there is a body, then a full-blown investigation of the whole school would be conducted. The campus would be shut down so that the police can gather evidence, classes would be cancelled, and that would mean Ayano can't see senpai, which I'm sure she wouldn't want. Investigations don't just last one day, and police officers, I would like to hope, don't just go, mm, I don't know, and call it a day. If there is a body, there is a case. That's it. That's literally all he had to do. And that is also it for me for this video. This was kind of a nice, quick one for me to do. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We just hit 5k as I was writing the script, which is amazing. I'd like to try and get to 10k someday, but really I'm more concerned about how I'm going to manage this when I go back to university. Anyway, please check out my comic because that would make me really happy. Follow me on all my social media and I will see you guys on the next video. Goodbye!